You know, first of all, I want to kind of recap a couple things from the game. Uh, be remiss if I didn't mention just what an awesome environment that was Thursday night. Um, you know, I think my hat's off to our game day production crew, our administration, um, the sports facilities, and, and, and of course our fan base. I thought it was just a phenomenal uh, game day environment. You, MSU Rodeo, I don't know that there's a more unique entry in, the, in, in, in all of sports than uh, being led onto the field with those horses. And so just a huge thank you to everybody that, that uh, made that such a special event. And I'm glad we were able to do our part and uh, make it not just a, a win for the Bobcats, but an exciting, hard-fought game. And so, uh, again, compliments to Western Illinois. I think that's a really good football team. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, I would watch that box score with them in Illinois this week. I think you might be surprised. I think that's, you know, a tough quarterback. You know, obviously the, the difference in the game, I think, was a number of things, but I think it really did come down to the line of scrimmage. I thought we were able to uh, to kind of neutralize their their defensive front in the second half. And, uh, you know, those, those redshirt freshmen and, and newcomers on their offensive line uh, didn't hold up against our, our veteran defensive line in the second half. And so I think that was kind of the tail of the tape. But... Uh, you know, good, good to get a good to get a win out of the gate. Haven't done that since I've been here, and so that's a great jumping off point for us. And now, uh, you know, we go to a preseason number three team in the country at South Dakota State University. Um, they've got a full game on us. We have a whopping 12 plays on them. Um, but you know, really, if there's an opponent where you can probably kind of throw that that game out the window, outside of getting an opportunity to maybe see, maybe see who some of the new personnel are. It would be this group because Coach Stiegelmeyer has, has done a tremendous job of just developing a, a true program there. Um, you know, schematically, it doesn't really change a lot. Defensively, they are who they are. Very basic, very sound, uh, very athletic. I think that this may be a more athletic overall defense than what they had a year ago. I know they've got a transfer safety in number 27 from Iowa. Uh, he's a physical kid. Didn't take a lot of plays for him to show up on the, the, the game film against Iowa State, as limited as that was. Um, you know, number nine, their corner last year, the Brown kid, he is an excellent, excellent corner. He did not play against us a year ago, was serving a suspension. And so he's a, you know, first team all Missouri Valley type of player. Um, their linebacker core is all coming back and all intact. Uh, number 12 is a guy I think that maybe gets lost in Rosenboom's shadow a little bit. The, the Logan Bacchus kid, I think he's a, you know, very rangy kid, 6'4", but he runs really well. Um, but that, you know, there's a reason why Rosenbaum overshadows some people. I mean, he's as good a player as there is at that position in the country at this level. And I think he's not, not only a great leader, but a tremendously productive player for them. And so we'll have our hands full. Like I said, I think as good as they were a year ago, being a semifinal team, an 11 win team, um, I think defensively their personnel's better right now than it was a year ago. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, it starts and stops with, with their quarterback. I mean, he is an unbelievably successful player. Uh, I don't know that, that – I mean, they could play football for another 100 years there at South Dakota State University, and they may not have a guy who's won as many games as this guy's going to end up winning. I mean, he's just a special player, um, not unlike maybe what Denarius did for this program in terms of really putting it on the map. Um, you know, I think, I think Taryn has done that for them. A four-year starter, just a prolific player, has all, all the tools. He's, he's, a, he's a big guy. You know, that 6'3", 6'4", 225-pound guy, he can run the ball really effectively. He is a tremendous passer. He, uh, you know, I know you, you're going to take away two great targets. I mean, you know, you have a guy that's drafted in the second round from an FCS program. He's probably a once-in-a-generation type of player there. But I, I, I think that there's so many guys that play for this team in, in and out. Uh, the continuity that they have with the staff, the commitment that they've made as an athletic department to the sport of football with the facilities they have. You, you know, it's amazing to look at what this team's been able to do um, coming up from a Division II program not that many years ago. And so... Um, be happy to take any questions. The play, I guess, that stands out from last year's game was the fake field goal. Uh -huh. um, is that a play that still kind of you replay in your mind, maybe kind of haunts you a little bit? No, me? not at all. Really? The two missed field goals and the missed extra point are what haunt me mm -hmm. um, because that was seven points that we had control over. I mean, they executed a good play. I mean, if – there was there's some things that we could have done differently in terms of having a contained player there, but you know that was a well executed, well timed play. It was fourth and fourteen, you know, not somewhere where you really think about them going for a, a fake field goal there. So, no, I don't look back on that at all. I mean, I think, um, you know, the score at the end of the half that gave us some life, us coming back from a you know 17-0 deficit to make it a really good football game, um, a team that beat the defending national champions. Uh, last year in, in North Dakota State, and quite honestly, I just got done watching that tape. Beat him pretty soundly. 
I mean, I think they were, you know, on any given Saturday, they could have been the team that was playing for the national title. And, you know, they had a weird deal with JMU at the end of the season. I don't think we were a national championship contending team. I don't think a fake field goal made that big a difference. I think us not executing in, in, in opportunities where we had opportunities too. A chip shot field goal, a 46-yarder, and an extra point. That's what the difference was in the game. Travis playing wide receiver. I think he's one of the best athletes that we have on our team, and we, we've got to make sure that if he's not playing quarterback, he's playing somewhere. And, uh, you know, I really have been tremendously impressed with Travis Johnson. Let me say that first and foremost, just the, the, um, the, the approach that this young man has taken, you know. Um, went to Oregon, didn't go his way. You know, goes to, goes to Riverside, and, uh, you know, they, they end up with this quarterback that goes crazy and is at Minnesota now as their starter. Um, comes here. Ends up breaking his foot, doesn't really get a chance to compete. We kind of go a different direction. He doesn't flinch. I mean, he's a, he's a really, really quality young man, true team guy, um, but also is a spectacular athlete and, and has a, a lot of ways that he can contribute to this team. The transition to wide receiver is in terms of uh, adjusting to a new position, how does he kind of grasp? Well, when you learn the offense from the quarterback position, it's probably the easiest to go other play, play other positions. You know, if you, it's harder to go from playing wide receiver to quarterback, certainly, than it is from wide receiver, quarterback to wide receiver. I mean, he understands the pass concepts. He understands the routes. Um, you know, he's played a little bit of receiver in the past, and so he's just a really good athlete that can do a lot of things. And Michael Jobman, uh, you know, the transition to middle linebacker now, one week in. Um... Yeah, I think he and Braden Conkle played the most snaps of anybody on our roster on uh, Thursday night. And I think, I think Michael was in the 89 play range there. I thought he was awesome. You know, I mean, he's a big, long kid that runs much better than you might think. Um, I think he'll get more and more comfortable playing in the box. It's, it's a hard transition sometimes from playing on the edge because there's so much to look at inside the box. But um, I thought he was a, had a really good night, a really good solid night. I think there's things that he could do better, just like there's things that a lot of guys can do better. But I thought he had a good night. He played, he played inside linebacker in high school, so it wasn't completely foreign to him. Um, I think he's a smart, tough kid. You know, he's got pretty good bloodlines. I think his dad was a captain on one of the Nebraska national championship teams back in the 80s. And so um, he, football's been a part of his life for a long time, and he, he kind of he gets, he gets football. After looking at the film, was there anything more that you were able to glean from Troy's debut, I guess, at quarterback? Yeah, I think there are some things that he'll learn a ton from because, you know, a lot of our route combinations are based on, you know, is it split safety, is it post safety, and, and knowing where to go with the ball. And I think there were some easy things that, you know, he would be able to now look at and go, oh, yeah, I can see why I should have done that. And there's no – you can have scrimmages, you can have seven on seven in practice and all that, but there's no substitution for those game reps. And so I think having the opportunity to now look back and go, oh, yeah, I, I can see why that would have been a better decision there. <clears throat> and he's such a smart kid that he'll – you know, he's – I've said it before, he's kind of a one-rep guy. He may make a mistake the first time, but usually not the second. With, with Troy, the quarterback, how does that affect the, the running back group? Well, we need to probably let the running backs have the ball more. I mean, if there's one critique that I would say is like, you know, let's maybe hand that off a little bit more. I think that was – because really, we don't know. You know, I mean, I don't think that you can – what I, what did – Isaiah had eight carries or something like that. I don't know what Isaiah can do based on we ran one play. And so it was pretty simplistic. I thought we did what we had to do to win the game. But uh, certainly we've got to be a little bit more um, willing to let those young backs go, whether that's him or, or, or Lane Sumner or, you know, KT or whoever it is. So we've got to, um, you know, we'll, the element of surprise is still in our favor and, and, and with the running backs, I guess you could say. Without uh, Wanky and, and Goddard, how do you think they – well, let me go through this with you. So, okay, so they return, they return two running backs, number 26 and number 35, the Wallace kid. Each of them had over 100 carries last year, okay? Uh, 15, Johnson, explosive punt returner, speed wide receiver. They used him a lot in the screen game last year. Number one, Brown, number 10. I mean, they played a lot of guys. 83, the tight end who was always in the game because they ran a lot of 12 personnel. I mean, they blew a lot of teams out. So a lot of these guys played a bunch of football for him. Now, I'm not taking anything away. Like I said, the Goddard kid is probably a once-in-a-generation kid. I mean, you don't. how many guys get drafted in the second round from FCS schools? Not very many. So as good a player as he was, 
you're going to have a step down probably at the tight end position, but that not much. And they're going to do what they do. I mean, it's funny because, you know, they have this play Y line that they've had a ton of success with Dallas with. And that was the opening play that they ran, a version of it against Iowa State. So it's like, okay, yeah, their DNA is not going to be any different. Um, and I think that's where they're at as a program too. I mean, Coach Stiegelmeyer be, being there for 20-plus years and having a lot of continuity with their staff. And, you know, they recruit to a model. They have all their tight ends are kind of the same height and weight. And, you know, you can see who they are. And, and, and I mean, they have an identity, and I think that's what they are. You know, they're going to do what they do in and, and, and all three phases. I mean, they don't – you know, I mean, I know they got us with a fake field goal last year, but that's really not their identity. I mean, they, they line up and they execute at a high level and they're well coached and disciplined and they play with good fundamentals. And, and that's why they win a ton of football games year in and year out. You mentioned uh, Braden Condell. How does this game this past week just kind of reflect and show how important he is? He's a really good football player. I've said it for a while. I think he's one of the more underrated guys in this league. Like, I, I just can't believe people sleep on that kid the way they do. He, he, he's one of the best open field tacklers that I've been around at any level. I mean, he can play the game at a high level. And so, um, I mean, he's tough, he's smart, he's competitive, he's got an edge. I mean, he is a, he's kind of grumpy, and that's a good thing, you know. So, um, I just think the kid's a really, really good football player. And he, his ability to match and, um, in this game, that could be a huge thing for us because having a guy like that that can match a tight end, you know, I mean, Braden's not a small guy. And he's got really good range, but he runs better than you think. He's got better base than you think. He can he can cover better than you think. There's a lot of things that he does that I think maybe get underestimated. You know, just think the the sheer ability that he had last year to start off at safety, go to will linebacker, and then play safety force in our nickel package and not miss a beat, and still be you know one of our leading tacklers and not make a bunch of mental mistakes, anything like that. So I think he's a, as I said, I think he's a very underrated player. How does that help the rest of the? I think it's you know provides a lot of security. You know, okay, Cox is back. We know he's going to do his job. I don't need to. You know, JoJo Henderson doesn't have to lean to 18 side to help him out. You know, he needs to do his job, and I think that's always good when you know you trust your brother. It's going to be fine. That's what I told our guys at halftime. What do we got to do to win? You know, you got to stay the course, keep your poise, and trust your brother. And that's what happened. Of those 16 roughly plays, you said you've seen of South Dakota so far. Is there anything that you guys are going to have to re-prepare for that you can't take away from the game on Thursday? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I think there's always a ton of work to be done from game one to game two, and there's guys that had never played in a football game. I mean, you think about it like this, okay? In June, we find out that the guy that's been our quarterback for the last two years isn't going to be here, okay? We'd already lost our, our top two receiving threats in graduation of Mitch Herbert and injury to, to Jabari, okay? Our leading running back is now going to play quarterback, and he played Sam linebacker in the spring. So, you know, I think we've worked through most scenarios here already, <laughs> and so I think there's a lot of, you know, I know we're going to improve week to week. Um, you know, I think, it, you know, I was under no illusions that we were going to be a finished product on August 30th. I mean, that's just the nature of this is it was going to take some time for us to find our group, but I think we've got a good group of guys that trust each other and, and understand what we're trying to get accomplished. Have you seen anything, sorry, no, that, no. that you think is going to challenge uh, either the offense, defense, anything like that? We'll be that? challenged in all three phases. This is an outstanding football team, back-to-back semifinal appearances. Um, they, they beat North Dakota State two out of the last three times they played them. Um, a four-year starter at quarterback, who I think is a legitimate All-American candidate. Um, you know, you can go down the list. I mean, this is a very, very good football team. Uh, again, you know, they're preseason number three in the country. We weren't ranked. So... It is what it is. I mean, we'll have our hands full no matter what. We're going to have to go play an excellent football game to beat a very, very good team. Jacob Hadley played his first game in almost two years, I guess. Um, can you evaluate his performance and how much more might fall on him now with kind of the situation now on the depth chart at that position? Yeah, well, I think he's going to have to grow a ton. I mean, I think it was, as you said, first football game in almost two years at a position he never really played before in a competitive game. And so um, – you know, there was a lot of room for growth. Let me just say that about Jacob's performance. I mean, I think he was in the right place and had opportunities, and now he's got to take that next step and just play a little bit faster, which he will, and, uh, and play with a little bit more confidence, which he will. And uh, he's got good people around him, and I think he realizes that now. He doesn't have to go out and make every play. He just needs to do his job. How has uh, Lance McCutcheon developed the past couple of years out of Pearson? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think he's a great kid. I think his mom did a phenomenal job raising both her sons, and she is a great, great lady. Um, 
he's a team guy. You know, he's a guy that if you need, if somebody needs something, Lance is there for them. You know, if they need a, if they need a ride to the grocery store, they need to borrow his car, they need to, you know, hey, got some guys coming into town, they need somewhere to stay. I mean, he's always that that guy. And uh, you talk about a selfless guy. I think he was targeted twice the other night. But if you watch the film, this guy did an unbelievable job blocking. I mean, he, you know, you don't usually sign up for a wide receiver to be the best stock blocker in the country. But, you know, Lance takes whatever role he has and he runs with it and is, uh, is a great kid. I don't think our kids question their ability to compete um, because we've been very competitive against some excellent programs over the last couple of years and last year in particular. Um, I mean, we can point to a ton of instances where whether it be Kennesaw, whether it be South Dakota State, you know, on and on, NAU, et cetera, that we're, hey, you know, you guys can compete with anybody. The question was, can we finish? And so I, I definitely think there was a collective sigh of relief in that locker room on Thursday night after the game because we finished. You know, we beat a good team with good personnel in a tight game. And uh, that, was, that was a huge moment for us in terms of a step forward. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, this is not a finished product. It takes a while sometimes to get these things done right. And, um, you know, there's no, there's no perfect formula for this. I do what's comfortable for me. And so for me to be comfortable, there were some things that had to be done here that were going to be different than what they were done previously. And that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just means it's different. And uh, it, it, it can take a little time. I mean, you know, we're still an extremely young football team. And so you look at it on the offensive side, I think potentially we'll lose two starters. On the defensive side, we'll lose three. I mean, five starters on your entire roster. And, and you know, I think that says something to the fact that we got guys that have played a ton of football. We're still a very young team, but I think we're gaining confidence each week. And, um, you know, I think these guys, these guys understand how important it is to have a little bit of swagger. And I think that was a big moment for them. Moving forward, if the offense can't execute, how comforting is it knowing that now the Big Sky uh, Special Team Player of the Week can get down on the 50 and score points for you guys? No, well, I mean, clearly that was the difference in the football game. I mean, I point to some of the things that happened a year ago, like we missed two field goals and an extra point against South Dakota State, and we lose by four, you know. Um, and, you know, they missed a field goal and an extra point the other night, they being Western Illinois, and that was clearly the difference in the football game. And so um, you can point to a lot of plays here or there, but those kicking game opportunities are such, such significant moments. And, um, you know, I think Tristan was very deserving of the not only the Big Sky but the national honor this week. And... And uh, hopefully it doesn't go to his head. I'll make sure of that, actually. And uh, <laughs> we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. Uh, with settling on Troy at, at quarterback, uh, just what did he show you uh, leading up to, up to that first game? Well, I don't know if, if I've ever seen a kid as – I mean, did he not just put the guys on his back on a couple of those drives in the second? Was that not impressive to see a guy just say, no, uh-uh, we're not losing this game, let's go. And I think that was probably the biggest difference. It wasn't his – you know, acumen for breaking down defenses or his skill as a passer. It was just the fact that he's a really competitive young man that everybody in that locker room is going to get behind. South Dakota State, you touched on it, underwent a big facilities upgrade a few years ago. Um, not unlike, I guess, what they're hoping to do here. Uh, and with, you know, the athletic director here having been instrumental in that upgrade over there when that went down, um, you know, both land grant universities. Can you point to the similarities of maybe what they've done there and what they yeah. want to get done here? Well, I haven't been there, mm -hmm. so I can't really speak to what they have. Okay. I can tell you it looks pretty, pretty nice on film. Um, I mean, Brookings, South Dakota is. I'm, I don't know how many what the population of Brookings is, but, but I know. Thousand. Yeah, I mean, it's not a it's not a large community. I know it's close to Sioux Falls, and that's where we'll actually fly in and out of and stay. So. Um, I, I, you know, I, I know what good facilities are. Let's just put it that way. And, and clearly we need to do better than we are right now. And I think everybody understands that this has become an arms race, even at the FCS level. You look at what happens over the hill there. Uh, they've invested tremendously in their facilities. When you go to the Missouri Valley schools, that's what you're seeing more and more is teams that are investing uh, in facilities. And if you're going to, it's no different than attracting the best and the brightest students, right? 
I mean, if you don't have nice dining halls and nice dorms and, and competitive programs, you're not going to get the best and brightest students. Well, the th same thing is true in athletics. If you don't have uh, nice facilities and, and, and kind of at least updated opportunities for these kids, that you know, they're going to go elsewhere. That's just the nature of it. And so I think we've done that, you know, all the way around the a academic side. I mean, with, with jabs, with, with uh, Norm as Bjornsson Hall, with – you know, Yellowstone with Rendezvous, with Miller. I mean, you, you go down the list. That's why we are growing as a university is because we're staying ahead of the curve in understanding what it takes to recruit the best and brightest students. And we've just got to take a cue from that side and do the same thing in athletics.